Good afternoon and good evening to most of you folks. I uh, just want to let you know that I have received an interesting and frankly unusual notification from the FAA about Starship. Um, a while ago, I had sent a uh, notification to the FAA. They actually had an email address where you could request any information as to any sort of updates on the FAA's process. And we've been getting updates from the FAA up to this point, um, including things uh, in regards to a launch in October, including these corrective actions, that sort of thing. But the environmental review, which is a separate issue, that's something we actually hadn't been notified much about. And instead of just recording a, you know, a complicated, uh, pre-prepared kind of video for you, my traditional types of videos, I really want to just share this information directly with you. So this is what they had to say, quote, Dear interested party, SpaceX conducted a test flight of the Starship Super Heavy at Boca Chica, Texas on April 20th, 2023. As a result of that launch, SpaceX completed a mishap investigation with FAA oversight. This investigation analyzed the launch, mishap events, and corrective actions. Before it is authorized to conduct a second Starship Super Heavy launch, SpaceX must obtain a modified license from the FAA that addresses all safety, environmental, and other regulatory requirements. As part of that license application determination process, the FAA will review new environmental information, including changes related to the launch pad, as well as other proposed vehicle and flight modifications. The FAA will complete a written reevaluation, or WR, to the 2020 22 Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA. This means that we need a modified PEA before anything can go forward, at least according to this notification. I'll continue. In evaluating the new environmental information, including Endangered Species Act consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, if the FAA determines through the written reevaluation process that the contents of the PEA do not remain valid in light of the changes proposed for Flight 2, additional environmental review will be required. Accordingly, the FAA has not authorized SpaceX's proposed Flight 2. The FAA will provide updates with notification of any license determination or results of additional environmental review. <sighs> this is significant. The FAA has never done anything like this before, by the way, just sending out a notification via email to anybody who had asked for these kinds of updates. And by the way, they sent it out at 4.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In other words, they sent it out like three minutes before closing time. So what this means is, guys, is it's possible from what I'm seeing here, as I said before, that a new PEA or a modified PEA is going to be required. In addition to that, they have carried out, as it says here, consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. That's separate from anything that the FAA has required up to this point. The FAA's corrective actions were designed to protect public interest, to protect public safety and safety of human beings, in other words. But there may be additional things that the FAA needs to do or consider in regards to the special environmental considerations that exist in this location. As we all know, there are regions that are very strictly protected under the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and, and other environmental organizations within the U.S. government that are theoretically threatened um, by any sort of launch that may take place in Boca Chica. If they determine that additional environmental reviews have to be carried out, or at the very least that a revised PEA needs to be sent out, then that could take considerably longer than just October. However, on the other side of the coin, it's also possible that the FAA has already been doing all of these things and that they are planning to have all of that done 
through the end of October. However, it is significant to note that this is the first time that the Endangered Species Act consultation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has really been mentioned. That's something that was never really brought up in the past and something that has been brought up in this particular email. By the way, this thing is definitely genuine. It came from the same email that I sent a request to when I had asked for any sort of updates that the FAA might be interested in providing. However, it's worth keeping in mind that the FAA never sent me anything. I mean, I asked for these updates a very long time ago. The FAA has never sent me anything from this email address and then all of a sudden now we're getting this. So once again, I'm not gonna say that this is 100% gloom and doom yet. I don't want to say that this is definitely going to mean a substantial delay to the program or anything. It's entirely possible that the FAA's timeline sometime in October may also include these environmental circumstances with the US Fish and Wildlife Service. But then again, it may not. And also, they need to release this written reevaluation to the PEA. This needs to be released to the public before any further launches can take place as well. So, this is just very unexpected. This is not something I thought that we were going to be getting from the FAA. Seemed like everything was moving forward just fine and we had a pretty good understanding of what was going to be happening and that the FAA was extremely cooperative with SpaceX, had been working in close concert with SpaceX and that we weren't gonna have any issues whatsoever. That may not be the case, however. Again, I think that the problems may be coming from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and not from the FAA, but their concerns need to be taken into account as well. Again, some of this is speculation on my part, but I've read you the entire content of the email and they are pretty detailed. They are pretty explicit as to what's going to be required. This at least needs to happen. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, first of all, needs to sign off on this. If there are any additional things that SpaceX needs to do to ensure the safety of these protected regions, that's going to have to happen. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is going to have to be satisfied that SpaceX has done everything that they're supposed to be doing, a written reevaluation of the PEA. But the most frightening thing, of course, is the possibility of an additional environmental review. If a full-fledged and traditional environmental review, rather than just a PEA, needs to be carried out before another launch can happen, that could take a year or perhaps even longer than that. Those things are very, very complicated. But again, I want to emphasize that that is not what this email says. But at the same time, it suggests that it might be possible. <sighs> and for all of you who have been following me for some time, I have been you know, trying to take a realistic position on all of this, trying to talk about the way the government might react, the things that could happen that could delay a launch longer than what Elon has been telling us this whole time. I've really tried to take, at least from my perspective, what is a realistic position. However, I have to say what I've just received today, I'm not happy about it all. I am frankly frankly, deeply concerned that an environmental review, if it is required, or even just additional environmental studies, whatever that might mean, could delay this process significantly. And for what it's worth, I really hope that that's not what happens. Even though I do respect the importance of these protected regions where Starship is currently being tested, where these launches are going to be taking place, that doesn't mean that spaceflight needs to take a backseat to, to the environment every single time. Absolutely not. Please like, please subscribe, incredibly important to my channel. Also, please check the description for various ways to support this content so I can keep bringing it to you. And as always, stay angry about space.